Hi, I'm Tiffany Youngren with OMH Agency, and I am going to walk you through just how we go through our clients and our own websites and update them each and every month. So as we go through this, you'll see one activity or task typically leads to another. And some of these tools you might use or be familiar with and others you might not be. So I am gonna show you exactly how we do it. It's very systematic so that we don't miss anything and also so that it's as efficient as possible. So the first tool that we use is called Teamwork. It's how we manage all of our projects. So that's what I'll be using today just to go through the different uh, steps that we go through for the monthly WordPress website updates. Um, I don't know if you've ever been to the back end of your WordPress website, but um, here's an example. I'm going to be using uh, coworkbillings.com. It's a new website that we recently built. I'll let you just kind of take a look at it so you can see the front end. But it's a site that we just set up. Um, it's not been that long since we did uh, create it, but you will find that it does need some updates. And I'm one of those, like, I don't know if you can look at your phone and see little red indicators and be happy with it, but I cannot. So as you'll see, uh, to log into your WordPress website, you go to your uh, web address and then slash and then WP-ADMIN and then another slash. Uh, if you uh, if we built your website, we would have given you a big list. So go to that big list and you should be able to find this link. If not, just type it in. Um, and then you'll also find, uh, I usually call it um, web dev or developer uh, login credentials, and it should have your username and password. If you do not have your username or password, I'll just show you an example of what you'll see. So here's uh, chat and grow, for example, uh, WP admin. And this is what it should look like, uh, something like this. Sometimes it'll have WordPress up top right here. But that is how you log in. So go ahead and log into your WordPress website. That's the first thing that you need to do. Um, and again, here's the dashboard. Uh, and what we'll be looking for um, up here, you'll see it'll say updates on the left hand side at the top. And you'll see you have the latest version of WordPress. Uh, like I said, I, we just recently installed that. Uh, WordPress does update fairly often, so that it's not unusual to, if you do this once a month, to see that. Um, and then down here, there are all these plugins uh, that need to be updated. And then our theme needs to be updated, as you can see. So I can go through my uh, dashboard. And this is how we used to do it until we started managing a lot of websites. And I know you're very busy. So I'm going to show you how we do it so that you can do this in just a few minutes. We use a tool called Manage WP. And we're going to add another website. Um, and it's actually free. A lot of the tools are absolutely free. So it's managewp.com. If you want to push pause and go back and open an account for yourself, uh, you'll be able to use it for free. So right now, I'm going to add a new website. Now, when we manage uh, client websites, I'm going to go to the plugins and show you when we use manage WP, we already have, we just save the plugin. So I'm going to easily be able to connect Manage WP, uh, but you might have to go through a few extra steps. So I'm just going to go ahead and add website. Oops. And it's still going to make me go through what you'll have to go through. So let's see. So the username and password that you enter will be the dashboard username and password for your actual WordPress website that you'll enter into here. And then you wait for it to establish a connection. And from there, go to the website dashboard. And you'll see um, this dashboard here. The first thing that I do is just go through and look at what settings I would like. You can see there's a lot that needs to be done here. Again, this is a very good indication of how quickly 
plugins, themes, and WordPress update because this is a pretty new website. So uh, first, uh, I want to check the settings. So over on the left, you have a navigation bar. First, click on backups, and we want to activate backups. You can either do free, where it's a monthly backup. Uh, you store. One thing I love about Manage WP is that it stores all backups on a third-party server. So um, your server probably, and, and if you're with SiteGround, they do have backups that you can restore that they occasionally back up. Um, and the thing with that is, though, is like, what happens if something happens to the server? Well, with Manage WP, we have a secondary backup. It's very, very easy to restore directly from your server. So my first route of attack, if there's an issue, is that we'll uh, restore a backup from SiteGround. But it's nice if something happens to the server itself, we have a backup on a third party server. Now, for our clients, we do premium because it is on a daily backup schedule. So um, it's only $2 a month. So if you want to go ahead and do that, that's great. You can also do on demand backups. So when I, I'm going to activate the free version for this website. And let's see, United States, include, you can include or exclude uh, content. So um, let's see, we want to include all of it. So activate. But if you want to have, like, let's say you make some changes to your website, um, it's really nice to have that on demand backup. But let's see here, backup now. Oh, wait. So if you want to backup now, for example, um, you would need to do the premium. So I will say like here it says, we are assembling your first backup. It might take a little bit longer than usual depending on the website size. So right now they are working on a backup. Normally what I would do, this is my website and I know how to back it up if there's an issue with this, but um, just for the sake of time, I'm gonna move on. However, if I were you, I would like here you can see the next backup is in progress already, um, but I wouldn't start updating plugins or themes or WordPress until that backup is done. I like to do a backup right before uh, I update everything because um, if something goes wrong, um, if something breaks, that does happen occasionally, then I want to be able to access that backup if I need to. Usually if something breaks, though, it's some, it just means it needs to be fixed. So usually I don't use the backup, but just in case, it's good to be safe. So here are the, the plugins that need to be backed up. There's no settings. Again, we're just going through this to check settings. Um, themes, users, I'm the only one. If you want to add users, you can. Um, security check. Um, you can activate the security check. Uh, there's a free version again, and then there's a premium version. Here we're going to activate the free, but it's not very expensive if you want to activate the premium. Uh, performance, you can check your performance. Um, I would just be careful because you're going to see things on there that you're like, oh my gosh, why is this not, you know, why am I getting errors on this? There's a lot of things that are kind of advanced that some of the performance issues you can uh, change and some of them you can't. So I hate it when people get alarmed over things that you just can't fix. So I typically use a different tool for performance just because this isn't as reliable as others, in my opinion. Uptime monitor. This is golden. Um, activate. This does cost money, so it's 90 cents a month. But watch what happens. Let's see. Um, go and go ahead and activate it and then hit settings. And then here you can set like how often it monitors, if you want it every five minutes, if you want it every minute. Notification delay, no delay. That means that if your website goes down, then um, you're not, there's not gonna be any delay of telling us. And I think that the reason they do this is sometimes, in nine times out of 10, if you get a notification that your website's down, it will go back up in a minute. So you're gonna get, some notifications where it's like, hey, your website's down. It's like, hey, your website's up. <laughs> so um, that way uh, it can just wait and tell you. Um, and, and by the time you get one, you should get both of them. So, so go ahead and save changes. Event notifications is, I feel, one of the most important things. <clears throat> you can actually click custom settings and then add people that you want to um, add. And by default, they use the, the global. But here, I'm just going to use global settings because I'm the only one that needs to find out. So save changes, but go ahead and change that. And then you will get an email if your website goes down, which is just awesome. Um, the other day, 
sometimes SSL uh, certificates will expire and that will trigger the website down notification. And so we're immediately able to go in and fix that. So it's a really, really handy. Um, SEO is another a handy little thing. Again, we use another tool, so I don't even worry about that. So you can set up reports if you want. <clears throat> but again, I'm going to keep this really simple. And the things I care about here in Manage WP are the backups, plugins, themes, uh, sec uh, security, uptime monitor, and that's pretty much it. So let's go back to the dashboard. So now you're set up. And we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how easy it is to update everything. So um, go ahead. I honestly, this is how I do it. Select all. And you can do safe update, which means it tests everything. It takes a very, very long time. But since I backed up, I'm confident that I will just go back and restore if it doesn't work. So I'm just going to click all those select all update. And while that's happening, optimization, um, this will optimize if there have been uh, post revisions, it will clean up those uh, old revisions and optimize those. Backup was successful over here. You can see our initial backup worked. Uptime monitor is up. Uh, it also, let's see, I didn't set up Google Analytics, but you can uh, integrate that. And um, also if there was, uh, like here it shows our theme needs to be updated. So click the theme and update. In WordPress, you can see there's zero updates, but if there was a WordPress update, then it would show up right there. So awesome, look how easy that was. We did the backup. We confirmed the backup, we updated WordPress, didn't need to happen this time, updated the theme, updated plugins. The next thing we're going to do is uh, just confirm our Google sitemap submission and our Bing sitemap sub submission. Again, these are things that we do for all our clients. I recommend that you, if you are in charge of your own updates, that you do it yourself as well. So in our WordPress websites, we always install Yoast SEO. <clears throat> So to find out where your sitemap is, go to SEO. So go to the left-hand column, go down to SEO. And under Features, you'll go down to here and see where it says XML sitemaps. Hit the question mark and click here where it says See the Excel sitemap. It's not very exciting to look at, but you'll want to copy it. And if we built your website, we did submit it already, so you don't have to do this. But if you are not connected to your Bing or your Google Analytics, you might need to go through this process yourself. <laughs> so I went into Bing Webmaster, and it's bing.com slash webmaster. And I clicked Add a Site, and I added Cowork Billings. And this is where our sitemap is. So I'm just adding that sitemap to Bing. And then one thing that they need is for you to um, just place this file on the server so they can confirm uh, confirm that you are who you say you are. So here, let's see here. Yoast does have a tool, but I honestly, I just always do this um, manually. So you go into this heading section and highlight the meta. And then you'll need to find where your headers and footers are. This is actually a little bit of coding, but it's 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 pretty simple if you just follow the steps. So I'm going to show you a plugin that will make it really easy for you. So go ahead and click Add New Plugin. And down here, type in Insert Header. This insert headers and footers, install. So this is the code that goes above your content and below your content in the header, but not the visible header, the invisible header. And the footers, also the invisible footers. So I want to make sure that that is in here. And activate it, yep. So what you'll go is hit, um, Settings, so let's see, oh, there it is. So settings, insert headers and footers. 
and then enter the Bing header. Now we're going to do Google at the same time. So when you go to um, analytics.google.com slash analytics, <clears throat> you'll want to go to this admin section and create an account. So my new account is Cowork Billings. Your new website is Cowork Billings. Oops. And it's an HTTP. Of course, if yours is not, make sure you fix that. Uh, if you, if we built your site, you're probably with SiteGround, and they do provide a free uh, SSL. So be sure to take to add that to your website. And it's really not that hard. And if you're with SiteGround, they are so helpful that you, all you have to do is open a chat and say, "Hey, how do I add a free SSL?" And they'll they'll tell you or they'll do it for you. I mean, they're just like. It's the reason that we recommend them so much is that their customer service there. I just feel like they never have excuses as to why they can't help you. So as you can see, we, we created the property um, down here under tracking information. We want the tracking code. So highlight it, copy it, and then go back to this, um, go back to your website and the scripts in the header, add this right below your uh, being, and then go down and save. So now you have both your Google tracking code and your Bing verification. So let's go back to Bing and click verify. And I hope I'm not confusing you with all these open tabs, but if you have a nice tidy list, you can um, go through and just open the tabs and then you can just go from one, one tab to the next. So you can see here in the dashboard now that uh, Cowork Billings is on there, that the sitemap is uh, added. And one thing that you'll notice is that I'm going to go back to teamwork. So our list, we have a link that goes right to our Bing page and to our analytics page. So we can look at our sites and make sure that um, the site map was added. Like, for example, when I come back next month, I'll come to this page. I'll click it on on teamwork. It'll take me right to my sites page and I'll click on Cowork Billings uh, website. And you'll look right here where it says last submitted. And next month when you do it, you're going to go, oh, wow, look, it was submitted. And then just see if there was any problem with them crawling your sitemap. And if yes, uh, then you need to figure out, like, what's the problem? Uh, when we manage your website, it's kind of nice because we include up to an hour's worth of changes. So this is one of the changes that we would include is, like, you know, if, if we see something like this, we'll go and make sure that your sitemap is properly configured um, and just kind of try to troubleshoot it. So nine i mean better than nine times out of ten i would say 99 out of 100 times there is no issue it's crawled sometimes we'll resubmit it so if there's a problem or if it wasn't crawled recently enough for us we'll just click submit a sitemap we'll go back to the yoast seo uh settings and grab that sitemap address and resubmit it so that that's the first and almost always that fixes it so i i don't remember too many times where that has been an issue so we've connected Google here. I'm back on the Google Analytics page. And um, the sitemap is not submitted on Google Analytics. And I swear, every time I come to Google, it looks different. So hopefully <laughs> hopefully, I can make this quick for you. But um, the next thing we want is Google Webmaster Tools. The nice thing is, is that Bing and Google call, call it the same thing. They call it uh, Webmaster Tools. So, now we're in the Google one. And the reason that I submitted the analytics code is we're going to add a property. And it's a lot easier if you you can connect it to your Google uh, analytics code instead of adding anything else. So it kind of uh, does two things all at the same time. So, and I'm all about fewer keystrokes and clicks. So, uh, oops, dot com. so we're going to add a property. We're going to add coworkbillings.com. And right here, recommended alternate methods, uh, Google Analytics. So we're going to verify it using that. Ta -da, congratulations, you've successfully verified it. So we want to hit continue and make sure that we submit our sitemap. So I'm going to go back to the sitemap tab and copy this again because I've copied a bunch of codes in the meantime. So. Uh, let's see here, crawl. So here you are on the dashboard, hit crawl and then go down to sitemaps. 
and then add test a sitemap. And then as you saw, I copied the whole URL. I'm going to delete the first part because they include the first part and we'll submit it. And then that just takes a little bit for Google to just really think about it. So um, I'll refresh the page and there it is. So again, it takes a while for them to actually go through and do it. So next month when you test it, again, if you have a list, if you have a to-do list, whether you use Trello or even if you use a document or Google Docs, it's really nice when you just have a really quick link that you can just hit and then go straight to your search console and check your uh, sitemap. We're able to do this in, um, in very little time because we've uh, got just really nice tight systems in place. So we just confirmed the sitemap submission for Google. We've submitted the Bing sitemap. And then um, now because we went through, I'm going to go back to the website. So here's uh, co-work billings. Now we've done a bunch of work to it, so I want to visit the site and go through the pages. Sometimes what will happen is a plugin will break um, because you think about it. I mean, WordPress is the coding um, system. You know, it's like the the foundation that your website's built on. And then if uh, your um, if if that updates, and then if your theme updates, but maybe let's say WordPress has had two updates and your theme has only had one update it might not work with, uh, perfectly with WordPress. Now, they'll probably come out with a new version, um, but you know, quickly, but in the meantime, you just wanna look at your website and just make sure that it's working properly. So let's just kind of, I, I like to go to just different pages. I think I might have to log out. So it seems to be working. I'm gonna log out. This is actually a membership site. so. When I'm logged in, it won't let me go to the home page. So I'm going to go to the home page. And just make sure that it looks good. Um, some tricky spots are if you have um, some kind of uh, slider right here, for example, like I'll show you an example of what I mean. So OMH PowerSite has a slider. And so sometimes this is a plugin that doesn't update as quickly because it's actually a premium plugin uh, it, that you have to update specially, which I'm not going to cover in this one. I'm just going to do the easy updates. But um, there is a couple. There are a couple plugins that are premium, and they're they're just a little bit tricky to update. One of them is RevSlider, and so sometimes what will happen is, is you'll just be scrolling down, you'll be like, whoa, I had a red slider there and it's not working properly. Um, and then also plugins. So like if, let's say WordPress updates, but then another plugin, like let's say the plugin that tells um, this to be one column and this to be one column and it's not updated properly and so suddenly everything's one column. So that would be a case where you would want to just revert and maybe don't update your theme and plugins until the following month to give your theme and plugins a chance to catch up with the WordPress updates. I hope that makes sense. And feel free to um, uh, maybe uh, tweet me with your questions and um, just uh, make sure you tag OMH agency and I will look for your questions um, there. So let's see here. So we uh, went through the site and checked for problems. That site, um, the uh, co-work billings look perfect. Okay, so you have officially gone through and done all the update items, except for one. There's one thing that I highly recommend that you do that um, we actually do for, you know, and I keep talking about like when we manage for our clients, we include up to one hour's worth of changes to their website. Not every month do they have updates. However, they do still get one hour's worth of work out of us. So. What we do is we make the changes that they request. And then after that, this is what I, I recommend that you do too, because it's going to discipline you to constantly improve your website. And um, slowly, like if you have more time to do it, like sometimes I get carried away and I'll spend more time on this because I'm kind of a little bit of an SEO geek. But um, um, this is just something that even if you don't have any idea what you're looking at, find something that you understand and see if you can fix it. So. Um, we use a tool called SEMrush. I just, I just think it's the most amazing gift to anyone who wants a good website on the planet. 
So um, I think that Manage WP makes um, keeping everything up to date amazing. And um, this is just my go-to tool when it comes to improving a website. What's funny is, is you think like, well, wow, if you built the website, I, I think this actually on my own self is like, well, wow, if you built the website properly from the beginning, why would it have all these problems? Well, um, there's a few reasons. One is that just how websites get scanned is different from day to day. I don't know why someone else really smart listening. If you're listening to this, you probably know why. But um, I do know that as they scan it, um, variables change uh, within like the, the rating systems. And you know, there's just like all these really boring things that you probably don't want to hear about changes. And so um, it's just really good to have something that's constantly scanning your website. And so I'm able to go. I plug the information in as a, a, um, a project into SEMrush. And so here's onlinemarketinghelp.net. That's our main website. And so just to give you an example of what you would see, a couple things can happen. One is that um, one thing that I keep finding are that themes do not, and we're actually going to watch more closely for this too, but themes do not always have what's called an H1 tag. Um, which I feel like is probably a whole other workshop, but just know that you absolutely have to have H1 uh, tags on all your pages. So if when you're looking at this, just again, look at what you do know. Well, you know, you just looked at a site map and you found one in in incorrect page on that. Um, when I see this, I kind of go, okay, well, uh, why does this show up on my site map and it doesn't show up or it's showing up on this scan, but it's not showing up on the sitemap. And I mean, I know what the reason is. We just made a whole bunch of changes to our website. So if that's the case, you go, OK, well, that's no problem. If if it is wrong, sometimes you, um, you can click on that. Uh, OK, why is this incorrect on the sitemap? I'm going to open this. So this is like the universal symbol for opening a new window, which you probably know. Um, and so it takes me here and I can see like, oh, is there a problem with it? Um, if you open it and it says 404, then you just want to make sure that it gets off of your sitemap. So go back to the overview. Um, again, this I feel like this might be really complicated, but um, you can always come back and listen to it. Or like I said, um, go on Twitter and just ask me questions about uh, you know clarifying anything. That'll really help me. Maybe I'll make a new one and improve it so that um, I'm not like geeking out too much and making it too confusing. So anyway, so you'll find here there are errors, warnings and notices. So the errors, one page has slow, slow load speed. This is always going to show up as long as um, actually that's not going to show up. If it's an error, there probably is an issue. So what I'll do is click on that page. And the last time I clicked on a page that had low, low speed, it's because a plugin broke. So always open that page if you find it. But anyway, again, um, there's a lot of training available on SEMrush uh, as to what it means and how to fix it. And you can see, um, I'll go to warnings and I'll show you one more thing. But um, one, this is a very difficult one to fix. So this would take some custom work. But um, again, go to the other ones that are easier. But here's a good example. This is a really easy fix. Um, don't have meta descriptions. Why and how to fix it. So you can actually read through and they've got some ideas to fix it. If you have this error, um, in fact, if you sign up for SEMrush and you do a scan, just look for this. Because all you have to do is open this page. Again, go to this where it opens it in a new window. And then uh, go to edit of that page. In fact, I'll just show you. So it'll open it in a new window. And then usually you'll see this page is set up different. But like, let's say it was this page. You can just click Edit Page right from where you're at. And then um, go down here. I'm going to open a, I'm going to open this page just to show you. OK, this is a bad example. So we'll go to the Power site. And OK, so if you click Edit Page, so again, I'm going to open SEMrush and show this to you again. So we just said um, 13 pages don't have meta descriptions. So if like, let's say this page was our power site page. So we open it and then we click edit page. And we scroll to the bottom. And this section right here is where you can set up 
that this is the Yoast SEO plugin and you can set up the title. Don't touch the slug, but then do the description. And that is your meta description. So as soon as you do this section right here, then it's going to correct that error. So anyway, again, that is just kind of an overview of the process that we go through to update uh, websites, our own websites, as well as our client websites. So uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. If you need any help, we'd love to help you. Otherwise, have a great day and um, good luck and keep your websites up and running.